My name is Justin Hall. A lot of you guys may know me from Married at First Sight San Diego. Welcome to my podcast. Look at that. I forgot that last part. <laughs> Welcome to my podcast, Men and Emotions. Uh, our special guest here is Paul Sane. Uh, I'm saying your last name correctly, right? It's Sainz. Sainz. Okay, Paul Sainz. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, Paul, you want to tell them how we met? Yeah, so uh, we met through actually uh, getting involved into the movie business. Uh, we both are are in an upcoming movie, and uh, we met actually meeting at the director's house. Um, yep. And we were both nervous, nervous about the, <laughs> the whole thing, and I, I think that's how we got everything opening up uh, from that point on. Yep. Yeah. What was funny is, you know what, man, my favorite part about that moment is when we got there and because we had never heard of the director, yeah. you know, like we had seen him, yeah. but you know, we just couldn't find much on him and I was just like nervous. So everybody had my location, bro. Everybody had my location. Right. Uh, even people, I wasn't even close. I was like, Hey, look, bro, yeah. you know, if, any, if anything happens to me, I need you to check the location and share it with my brother, somebody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was on the same thing though. So like, just when we explained that to each other, it just made everything feel like normal. Yep. Again. Like, okay, it did. I'm good. It did. Yeah. Yes, sir, man. That, that was good, man. I'm definitely excited to uh, go back and finish. Uh, what well, we got five days left. Yeah. This month. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm ready to get yeah. to it. I feel like I miss it already. Honestly, like I got back. Bruh. Like no, I want to get back to work. Like, yeah, yeah, get better at your craft. Mm -hmm. Man, I uh, that that gig you got, you sent me the one for where you had they was looking for six four or taller. Yeah. Uh, so I, I auditioned for it. Um, I went to the gym. It was pe people were looking at me like I was I was crazy because I had to do like a three sixty. Yeah. <laughs> so like, think about a six eight dude coming in, just sitting his camera, and he just basically doing a American Next Top Model walk because you got to show your whole body. Yeah. Um, and then you know I had to do some drills. I had to do some dribbling drills, some uh, some dunking drills, layup drills, uh, and three points. Uh, and so they ended up. Well, let me finish telling you the story. Long story short. I did completed the audition and I didn't hear from him. And I was like, man, it's been like five days, you know, and they ended up emailing me back yesterday, uh, for the small, the small forward position. Hey, and yeah. And it's in Utah. Um, and I think they paying two grand. Ooh, let's go boy. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Congrats, man. Gotta... I feel good because I like, I threw the oop. You ducked it though. You did, bro. Yeah, you did. That's that's, what, that's why I text you. I was just like, bro, good looking. Yeah, good looking. For sure. Like I told you, like when we was out there, I'm like, they looking for you. Yeah, they looking for you. They need people yeah. like you. So it's just like yep. it's just most of the time we not approach with the opportunity. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, and a lot of times we we don't even know the opportunity. We don't even know if it's there, so we miss out on it. Yep. It's a lot That's of people true. I, I even know, like, even getting into the business that we're getting in, um, I know a lot of people that's like, I want to be a movie star, but they don't even know the mm -hmm. first steps. So, you know, man, I'm just... Nah, you're right, man. Yeah. Dude, when I say, you know, ever since we had that conversation, it was like, you got to constantly apply. Man, I, I'm on my phone like indie, bro. Like, I'm yeah. just constantly applying. Like, mm, some come my way, you know, and I got it filtered for me so i got like tall black you know uh african descent mm -hmm. uh you know uh american english like i'd be applying dude so yeah nice yeah. man congrats i appreciate it man back at you back at you how's uh you did you had a modeling gig didn't you yeah so uh a few like i i had one for north face and dicks um oh yeah they they sent me that one i couldn't make the dates man yeah, yeah, I, man, I, I I got caught up with the same thing because they wanted a lot. They wanted the hiking pictures and stuff like that. Yep. So it yep. was like I just applied with what I had, so we'll see what's going on there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't make the dates. That's this week, isn't it? Yeah, it's this week. Or yeah, yeah, I couldn't make the dates because um, I'll be out of town. I'm actually going. I'm I'm going back to Big Bear. Yeah. Uh with some friends, you know, and just and, and just kicking it. Uh just for that peace and quiet and you know, no work. So that's yeah. always that's always a pleasure. Yeah, we, well, let's go ahead and jump into it, man. How you feeling? 
I'm feeling great, man. It's yeah. Great. Okay. Feeling blessed, and I'm I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. So you know, part of the reason I started this podcast, man, um, is when during my time on Married at First Sight, you know, I'm recognizing that like men just don't really, you know, we 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 suffer in silence. You know, a lot of men, you know, I, I've been doing surveys on this, uh, on this, bro. Like I just walk around, you know, and some people notice me and they'll talk to me, you know, and, I'll, you know, and I would just get the converse here and I'll ask, like, you know, how do you deal with your emotions? And, you know, first thing they say is, well, I can't because of society, you know, you know, um, and so that's what encouraged me. You know, I cried on TV and I'm proud of my tears, you know, and, and I tell people, you know, I, the reason I cry, what works for me may not work for everybody else. But when I cry, it feels good. I feel recharged. Yeah. You know, sometimes you need a good cry. Uh, I do think that, that there can be a balance, but it's no different than, you know, asking somebody why they frown all the time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know, like people say, why do you cry? And I'm like, I'm just in tune with who I am. I don't care how I'm looked at it about it. You know, and I was watching, uh, I was watching this clip of Steve Harvey. And, uh, it's crazy that I ran, it was an algorithm tracking me, bro. I'm telling you, um, I ran this clip of Steve Harvey and a woman that he was interviewing on there was saying that women emasculate men when the, 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 the second she sees him cry, you know, uh, she sees him as weak. So if women, if let, let's say that's true. Let's say, let's just throw a number out there. Let's say 80% of the women feel and think like that. How do you think that's going to make the men react when he's really trying to express himself, knowing that he's going to be viewed like that? Right. Exactly. So it's like, it's like vulnerable. I think before that, Your mic breaking up. I, I think that we look at vulnerability, vulnerability as a weakness, and it's really a strength. You got to mm -hmm. understand that for you to be vulnerable around some, someone takes courage because a lot of times we, we, we shield ourselves, we shield our feelings, we shield uh, our, our thoughts away from mm -hmm. people. So to be vulnerable and be open around somebody, that takes a lot of strength. What people have to stop doing is, is blocking people off from their feelings. You get what I'm saying? You should be able to mm -hmm. express those, those feelings, but the action behind it is really what makes the difference. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? We're all feeling things. So even like if I'm feeling a, uh, uh, if I'm feeling angry, I, it's okay that I feel angry. It's the action beyond uh, feeling angry that's going to co cause conflict. You get what I'm saying? If I feel angry yep. and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go and sit somewhere. Nobody ever even knows I was really angry. Probably expression mm -hmm. on my face, but my action behind it show otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I don't think, I, I think the vulnerability of being open and be able to cry, to be able to do that with the significant other or anybody should be free. Mm -hmm. But I, I I think backgrounds would, would, would deflect that as well. Like, with whatever background you come from will kind of deflect those emotions and how you were able that's true. to express those emotions growing up. Mm -hmm. No, that's, 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 that, that's very true. I, um... I wish that sometimes I wonder, you know, like how if vulnerability, like if vulnerability was a thing, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't viewed as a weakness, you know, how I feel like, I feel like society will, will find some type of era, you know what I'm saying? To pull from it, you know, um, it's sad, but I'm realizing, you know, it, it's, it's a thing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really a thing. And, you know, to talk about, you know, anger and emotions, you know, being from the South, the more anger you show, the more masculinity uh, you, you, you show, you know, the, the more masculine you are. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, who, who, who came up with that? Right. You know, like literally that is so toxic, bro. When you just sit down and think about it, that, and you've heard of this, you know, shut up or I'm gonna give you something to cry about. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, or, you know, um, just in general, like, boy, you boys don't cry. Or men don't cry. You yeah. know, suck it up. Right. Deal with it. Right. Uh, and, and we grow up and we, we, we we're raised, you know, to just suppress everything. You know what I'm saying? And we I always say I always tell people that 
there, there's um there's a camouflage to everybody's uh to to what everybody's doing. Everybody's showing emotion in a different way and it has different behaviors. Mm-hmm. You know, like when people cry, in my eyes, when men cry, there's so many different styles of crying mm-hmm. and, 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 and the society just sees tears. But people cry through their Instagram posts. People cry through their captions. You know, people just cry differently. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I feel like people need to recognize that. And with our generation being the way it is now, man, you just have to be mindful of what you say to people, you know, uh, especially men, because I feel like there's a lot of pressure on just being a man in general. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, I would say I knew some dangerous people where I count came, mm-hmm. like where I come from. I know some dangerous people. If they start crying, you need to run. So it's like, what, yes, where, where do where do we need to start targeting the weakness from crying? Because it's like, like you said, you could show different emotion through crying. Mm. You could cry because you just lost in a sport and you can't take this this loss well and you tear the whole place up. But mm-hmm. that shows weakness to me, even that you can't control your emotion. Yeah. I think the weakness comes in when you can't control something. Like mm-hmm. I'm a personal trainer, so I lift weights. If I can't control the weight, that makes me weak. It doesn't matter how how high up the number gets. Mm-hmm. I need to be able to control what I have. So if that's controlling my body, some people just mm-hmm. start with their body. Just be able to control your body. So being out of control of yourself is weakness. That's what we have. To All do. right, let me play devil's advocate real fit, real quick. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. So, in order to control that, what if they haven't been taught that? You know what I'm saying? Like, what if, what if television has been the only thing that's really been showing them how to be a man? Because, I mean, let's be honest. I I was raised in a single family home, and most of the people where I come from come from a single family home, and and most of my majority of my friends are black. And their 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 mom and dad are present, but they were never present at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So the reason I want to play devil's advocate is because I'm just like, well, what if you haven't been taught to control your emotions? What do you think? What if you think that you're controlling your emotion? Because I'm a I'm a, I'm gonna keep it real with you. When I was on Married at First Sight, it was times where I thought I was controlling my emotions. I thought I was in control, but when I went back and I watched it, I was just like, damn. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to be emotional, but it I, there needs to be control. But I thought I was in control. So my question to you is, what if you think you're doing it and you're really not? So I, I know we talked on one thing. Now I'm big on it, understanding. Mm-hmm. What you just told me was that you understood you thought you were in control. So that, t- that shows me that something changed in your mind to show that you weren't in control at some time. Mm-hmm. Am I, is that right? I don't want to be in your mind. Keep... No, no, no. Sorry, right. I'm just, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm processing. So, in the understanding of it all, you got to see that. How can I put this? Basically, through the understanding, it opens up room for for growth. Now, the people that don't know, the problem that we deal with, the people that don't know, the problem that we deal with is exposure leads to expansion. I believe that in any exposure That's leads true. to expansion. So what you're doing, you're creating a platform that's going to lead to exposure. So you're doing the work. We talk about OGs, okay? Mm-hmm. For the OGs, the people that we listen to, the older people that that's like that's going to give yep. game. You're creating yep. a platform that's going to give game to these people. So exactly the places that we come from, I come from a harsh place. It's my, I feel like. It's my job to go back and give these jewels to these people that don't have it. Because the reason I didn't know is because nobody came back to tell. Mm-hmm. So I, it's, it, I feel like it's more of my job to get out here, to speak more on people's platforms like yours. And that's going to be shown to people that's going to lead to exposure. And that's going to lead to expanding their lives to beyond what we can even think about. Man. That's a good point. Yes, yeah, so but that's where I go with it, man. That that was deep. I, I want you to get a little bit more deeper. So you wanted to you wanted to talk about you know your emotions and and anger. Yeah. You know, 
let, let's talk about a little bit of, of your background, you know, and like how you dealt with your emotions and your anger and how you got to the place that you are now. Got you. So I'm, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I, I grew up in different neighborhoods. Um, my, I, I basically came up in neighborhoods that's like, if you, if you Google them, um, <laughs> I know <laughs> it'd be the neighborhoods to stay away from. But I, yeah. I had the best of both worlds because my mother lived on the other side of the tracks. And mm -hmm. so I was able to go to some of those schools when I stayed with her. But I moved back mm -hmm. and forth between my mother and father. So Got it. I, I grew up, basically, I would like to call myself like a, a, a sophisticated hood person. Uh, <laughs> I know what that means. Yeah, so, so it's like, um, I've seen a lot of things, man. I, I had to be strong in my environment because I showed where when I was coming from a suburban type of area or school, when I went back to the hood, like that happened to me in the fifth grade, second to fifth grade, I was, I was in some suburban areas. I was in a different type of school environment. Then I moved with my father and I was in mm -hmm. a rough neighborhood, but I was yeah. dressing different. I'm wearing polo. Some of these could, kids couldn't even afford certain type mm -hmm. of things. And it was like, I was exposed to something different. <clears throat> Remember, that's the exposure leads to expansion. So it's like I was just exposed to things more. I talked different. And and these kids just, they picked me. They picked on me. I was a target. Mm -hmm. But my father, he didn't play no games like that. He raised me to be like a soldier, very militant, very, like, hostile. So at this mm -hmm. time, he had told me, like, never, <clears throat> never get in a fight with kids. Never get in a fight. And so at school, I would go and get picked on until – I just couldn't take it no longer. I went back home, told my father, look, hey, I'm getting picked on at school. What do I do? And he was like, man, you getting picked on. Why you didn't tell me? I was like, well, you told me don't go to school, start fighting people. He said, I told you don't start any fights. Now, if you go to school and somebody else messes with you, you better finish that fight or you're going to have to come see me. Now, at this time, I was scared of nobody in this earth besides my father. So it was like, okay, I'm going to school and I'm finishing whoever starts with me. From that mm -hmm. time on, that's when it created a different person. I saw, I saw myself like when you were angry and me targeting my anger, I was protected by it. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the way for me to get through life because I, I started <clears throat> being accustomed to this way of living. It's like you, me dealing with my anger, it seemed to protect me away from the bullies. It seemed to protect me away from a lot of things I saw in the neighborhood. I could just walk by because they thought I was this tough guy. But mm -hmm. deep down inside, like, I don't want to fight every day. Facts. You get what I'm saying? I don't who, who <clears throat> fight every day. Who wants to be in that type of environment? And I literally was fighting every day to the point they kicked me out of the school. This is just fifth grade. This is early. Damn. Enough. This is just early on. The teacher had to come by my my house and drop off my work because when I would go to in-school suspension, I would be in there with the same kids I just whooped on. And, and so, like, yeah. they won't pay back. Mm -hmm. It just didn't work. They was like, we just got to keep them out of school. But really, I was just fighting for myself. It's, I didn't go to school still fight, starting fights, but I would finish them. And so the biggest thing, man, to make a long story short, is that I felt growing up in my type of environment that anger was the thing that was going to push me through and protect me for me to be even where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I appreciate you sharing that dog. That's deep. Yeah. That's hella deep. Yeah. Um, how, you know, what, what advice would you give, you know, just people, you know, the viewers, you know, people that are dealing with what you're dealing with right now in fifth grade, in the fifth grade that a lot of people aren't going to like that you're different. They're not going to like that you're different, but at the end of the day, what makes you different is what makes you, you. So you got to mm -hmm. embrace that because that's never going to change. If you try to camouflage yourself now and try to fit in, you'll be doing that stuff. When you get older, it's never going to change. Mm -hmm. The same people are like piranhas. They're going to be after you. So yep. You just got to embrace who you are and be comfortable in it because you don't want to be a prisoner of yourself. Facts. Just be free and just embrace yourself. That's what I say. 
Man, you know what I admire about your story, dog, is that you know, like I follow your stories, like, like you, you be killing it on on social media, Instagram. Thank you. And if, by the way, um, what's your Instagram? Uh, poor uh, underscore insane. I n s a i n. Go follow that guy. He got some great photos. He does. Thank he you. does. And low key, he, you be doing some shit that that be motivating me, man. You did a photo shoot where. You just in the background and you was holding some weights. Yeah. And we had just text. Yeah. And I was just like, man, this just took my, my, my motivation to a whole nother level, man. And and them the type of people I need to be surrounded by, you know, because we are different. Yeah. You know, we come from similar backgrounds. We really do. Mm-hmm. And I'll share with you in a second. Um, but just because we come from that environment doesn't mean we have to be that environment. You Absolutely. know. Um it's man. <laughs> I just, I love your story because where you come from to taking Tom Ford photos, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, not photos, just Tom Ford ads, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You, you're doing Prada ads, you're doing, like, you're doing, you're doing all of these advertisement. And I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful to be able to interview you because people need to see this, bro. Yeah. Pe- like people that look like us, kids that are growing up. You know, that don't want to be a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse, you know what I'm saying? That can be like, dang, so I really can do that, you know, and, and to share like, sorry, I'm getting excited, but to share the background of it, mm-hmm. you know, like, bro, it's still possible. Yeah. Like, you're an encouragement to people. And you know, if you don't know that you are, you I, know, you definitely encourage me. That's for sure. Thank you, man. Uh, my, my biggest thing is like, I was... I was a kid that just had a dream. I was just motivated by a dream that I felt like that got taken away from me. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So I I was motivated. I I wanted to be a football, baseball star. I thought I was the next Dion. But I chased this dream for so long to the point where my body just wasn't capable of doing it anymore. And so Mm -hmm. I had to hit a transition. But the whole thing about life was, I thought it was building me to be one thing and it was collecting me to be something overall. So me Mm -hmm. being a football player, me being a leader in the locker room helped me to be able to speak and to be able to lead men or to Mm -hmm. lead the situation. That's now that I became an entrepreneur and owning my own company. It's like being Mm -hmm. able to lead. So being where I'm at now, the whole transition is just a whole different place. And a lot of people think, because I came up the same way a lot of people will become from what you got to be a rapper or you got to do sports and they don't know yep. about these different avenues. Yep. But I can, I can come back and tell them, look, I went down the same avenue you did. I tried that way. But if I, mm-hmm. I would have jumped on this modeling when I was 21, where could I be at? Yeah. You know, everything happens Facts. for a reason, but it's just like, I can tell people, look, man, I went through this avenue. I got a different way now. And just mm-hmm. go back and show people from our community how you can just do something different. You don't have to keep doing the same thing, man. A lot of people yeah. laugh because some of those ads, like, they couldn't believe, like, I would even do some of those shoots. Mm-hmm. So it's just to show that I'm even comfortable doing some of those shoots just was like, damn, if Paul's comfortable with doing it, maybe I can be comfortable with doing it. Mm-hmm. You know... I, I want to add something to that right there. My next episode, I'm actually going to have a woman on, and it's going to be about men complimenting men. And, man, that was – I got a lot of backlash about <laughs> on Married at First Sight when uh, one of the guys complimented me and how I reacted. Yeah. And not knowing how I reacted, <laughs> uh, well, it's culture. It's, it's because of culture. Me being from the South, you know, and you taking photos like that, I would have – I would have been like, man, that's weird, yeah. you know. Yeah. The the younger Justin, if yeah. I wouldn't have, you know, been exposed, right, uh, to an extent. But what I'm learning is that it's all about culture. It's all about that region. So, for example, down south, um, my homies would have been like, man, you suspect. Yeah. But that's not the case at all because I have we haven't been exposed to that that type of thing with men compliment men like that. You know what I'm saying? Men showing just being comfortable around another man, you know what I'm saying? With just boxes on. Mm-hmm. You know, uh it was just you know, 
in the South, you're taught to, I mean, even in the locker room playing basketball, the guys want to shower together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We go home and shower. Don't nobody really use it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so I appreciate you, you know, sharing that, that, that perspective when your homies was just like, dang, bro, you, you starting to get me into it because they're being exposed to just something new and something that's already normalized just not in their region right you know and so yeah sorry i just wanted to add that no no absolutely man like the the biggest thing like i really like give a lot of props to my mom on on being able to show me a different type of style you know what i yep. mean even the way i dress it like she she came from california to cleveland she used to talk about it all the time saying like i can't wait until i go back but because mm-hmm. I was in Cleveland, I was like, what's so good about California? Yeah. And now that I leave, I'm like, Paul, oh, like, why did you want to be stuck in Cleveland? You get what <laughs> I mean? feel that. Like, man, I, I really give a lot to her on being able to show me more. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, I even talked to you uh, about thrifting. Like, being a. Bro, I love thrifting, man. Man, a lot of people sleep on that, but it's like, shoot, I could throw on a Ralph Lauren suit and you like Facts. nice, and you don't know where it came from. Yep. So it's perspective. Man, tell me, man, I'm telling you, boy, people be sleeping on thrift stores. I do not sleep. They don't have any good ones here in San Diego. Yeah. But in Denver, man, them thrift stores would look like Walmart. Bro, I have three floors. They sold furniture. <laughs> uh, I'm just like... What kind of thrift store is this? You know, but I was in that. Matter of fact, I found me a um, a Michael Kors blazer. It's a maroon. I got it in my closet, and it was literally, bro. It was a forty slim long, and that is my size. Yeah, I was like, dang, this is me. It was it's meant. It was you. meant for me to find. It was for facts too. Exactly. So that's man, facts. I'm doing the thirty day challenge starting December. So look, yeah, starting up. I'm doing thirty day challenge. I'm wearing a suit every day, man. And look, like, damn, you got that many suits. I, I'm gonna use that thrift store. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, bro. I like it. I'm gonna show people how you can show style. You ain't got to spend. Yeah. Like my whole thing about living is like we cut out the excuses. Like even when mm-hmm. people say I don't have a lot of time, my workout's ten minutes a day. You get what I'm saying? Ten minutes a day, mm-hmm. cutting out the excuses in life because it's like we got places to go, man. So we cutting that out. So the suits. I'm going to be in the thrift store spending $40 coming out with a few. <laughs> Bruh, you know, my favorite deals is when you go, this is how cheap I am. You go to the thrift store and the thrift store are already cheap. But then if you go on a certain day, they got 50% off. Mm-hmm. Friday. So if it's, bruh, $8, $4. Yeah. It's 20 it's 10 I'm just like, man, I'd be racking up. I remember I went to the thrift store and I bought four blazers and it came out to like $11 and I was so confused. And then when I got there, it's because everything was discounted. <laughs> I, hope people, I hope people really take on like to the thrift store. Like, honestly, stop sleeping on the thrift store. Get your wardrobe right. Take it Facts. to the cleaners if you really feel like that. You're still spending less for good quality. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's true, man. That is true, man. People be sleeping on it. Dude, it's been a great pleasure having you on here, man. I appreciate you sharing uh, your story with me and uh, sharing your story with the audience, man. Um, I'm going to put your, your your Instagram info in uh, the bio, um, if that's okay. So if anybody have any questions, you know, if they want to connect with you or just, you know, get a little bit deeper, you know, they, they know how to con- contact you. Absolutely, man. Pleasure of being on. I appreciate you for having me, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. All right, dude. Well, we out of this thing. Good people. Thank you for watching. And we will see you guys next week. See you. Happy. Take it easy. All right, dude. Yeah.